Howdy, friends. Uh, welcome to First United Methodist Church of Laporte, our online worship service, uh, Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. I'm glad you've chosen to join us. Right now, we're in a sermon series called Commit Big. We had our confirmation service last Sunday. Uh, today, in uh, live worship, we are uh, inviting those who haven't been a part of our church membership to join and so it's we're calling it joining sunday here in live worship so uh, this uh, sermon today is focused on uh, how we might commit bigger to jesus christ so i'm glad you've chosen to join us today god bless we open our eyes and we see Jesus, the months of ministry transfigured to a beam of light, the light of the world, your light. May your light shine upon us. We open our eyes and we see Moses and Elijah, your word restoring us, showing us the way, telling a story, your story, his story, our story. May your word speak to us. We open our eyes and we see mist, the cloud of your presence, which assures us of all we do not know and that we do not need to fear that. Teach us to trust. We open our eyes and we see Peter's constructions, his, be his best plans, our best plans, are missing the point, are missing the way. Forgive our foolishness and sin. We open our eyes and we see Jesus, 
not casting us off, but leading us down, leading us out to ministry, to people. Your love endures forever. We open our ears and we hear your voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And we give you thanks. God, we are thankful for your redeeming love and we are thankful you listen to our prayers. Hear our concerns for those among us now. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We speak these words today in the name of Jesus, the Christ, one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. And now, God, may your word be proclaimed, either through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name, amen. In his book, uh, Developing the Leaders Around You, John Maxwell tells a fascinating story about sharks. These fierce leviathans of the deep sea. Sharks, he says, only grow as large as their surroundings will permit. You know, the shark, strangely enough, is one of the most popular fish for aquariums. The reason for this is that sharks adapt to their environment. If you catch a small shark and confine it to a small aquarium, it will stay a size proportionate to the aquarium in which it lives. Sharks can be six inches long and be fully mature. But turn them loose in the ocean, and they will grow to their normal size. You know, I've noticed the same phenomenon about followers of Jesus Christ. If we are challenged to grow and stretch and live heroic lives for Jesus Christ, then we rise to the occasion. We have that capability. Left unchallenged, however, and most of us stay where we are, with an immature understanding, if you will, of faith and a nominal commitment to Jesus Christ. Our scripture for today contains one of those growing and stretching experiences that came from time to time for Jesus' disciples. Go with me, if you will, to the top of a mountain. Jesus is there with his three most trusted disciples, Peter, James, and John. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. 
He did not know what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. Well, as usual, Mark does not give us many details about what happened on that mountain. Part of that's because Jesus told them not to, but did they have a time of prayer? Did Jesus lead them in a time of meditation? Did they cook s'mores? What, what did they do up there on that mountain? We don't know. All we know is that suddenly the disciples saw Jesus uh, transfigured. That's the word that the scripture uses, transfigured. Now, what does that mean? Now, we don't know exactly. All we can say is that somehow the disciples saw Jesus' appearance change. It was glorious. He, he was changed into the what we call now the glorified Christ who will one day reign over all of life. And that's about as far as we can go. Right before the disciples' eyes, Jesus was somehow changed into something even more beautiful and magnificent. Mark tells us that Christ's clothes became this, this dazzling white. Then, says Mark, the disciples saw Moses and Elijah there with Jesus, talking with him. You know, Moses, of course, gave the children of Israel the law. Elijah was the greatest of the prophets. So here, here we have the highest representative of the law. Here we have the highest representative of the prophets. And with them, we have the transfigured Jesus there in their company. And then at that moment, the disciples heard a voice. This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Now, at this point, the scripture just says that the disciples are terrified. Hmm. Now, that's a crucial statement for us, I think, to, to notice there, that the disciples, the disciples were terrified. We can appreciate their response to this most unusual situation. We would have been terrified, too. We hear about people experiencing strange phenomena and extraterrestrial visitations or out-of-body experiences, but for the most part, these, these sorts of things have not happened to us. And we are actually uh, a little suspicious when they happen to other people. And we would be suspicious of Peter, James, and John's report too, I think, except for the way in which it affected their lives. This experience, as well as, as many other experiences that they had with Jesus, well, it radically transformed them. You and I now, some 2,000 years removed, can, can kind of make light of their experience. But it was so very real to them that they then gave their lives, they began to give their lives for Christ. Literally, Christ was transfigured and the disciples were terrified. Now, why were they terrified? Because they were dealing with something outside of their experience. Here was Christ in all of his glory. Here was someone whose life shone with a beauty and an integrity that they did not have. Here was one whose dazzling white robe indicated his holiness, it indicated his purity, his uniqueness, and they were but ordinary mortals. And they were afraid. Being in Christ's presence made them aware of their inadequacies. Being in Christ's presence made them aware of their imperfections. They were sinners in the presence of one who was sinless. No wonder they were terrified. While serving aboard a gunboat in Vietnam, Dave Rover was holding a phosphorus grenade some six inches from his face when a sniper's bullet ignited the explosive. In his book, Welcome Home, Davey, 
he describes the first time he saw his face after the explosion. He says, when I looked in that mirror, I saw a monster, not a human being. My soul seemed to shrivel up and collapse in on itself, to be sucked into a black hole of despair. I was left alone with an indescribable and a terrifying emptiness. I was alone in the way that my soul, uh, that the souls in hell must feel alone. That's what he said. Well, finally, Rover came back to the States to see his young bride, Brenda. Just before Brenda arrived where he was, Rover watched the wife of another burn victim tell her husband that she didn't want him anymore. She wanted a divorce. And then at that moment, he saw Brenda walk in. Show, he, he writes, showing not the slightest tremor of horror or shock. She bent down and she kissed me on what was left of my face. And then she looked at me in my good eye, smiled and said, welcome home, Davy. I love you. Now to understand what that meant to me, you have to know that that's what she called me when we were most intimate. By using her term of endearment for me, she said, you are my husband. You will always be my husband. To understand the grace of God poured out in Jesus Christ, we must first understand our own inadequacy. We must understand our own imperfection, our ugliness as it were. But the transfigured Christ in all of his loveliness and all of his holiness and all of his glory still loves us, still calls us his own. There was no need for the disciples to be terrified, but they did not know that. All they could see was Christ's holiness and their own unworthiness, and they were terrified. But then they were transformed. You know, that's the second thing that we need to see from this passage. They were transformed. Oh, not at once though, right? Transformation rarely happens all at once. Don't let anyone mislead you into believing that. Few people are genuinely converted to Jesus Christ completely all in one night. The experience on the Mount of Transfiguration was but one. It was just one stop on the disciples' pilgrimage to becoming apostles of Jesus Christ. They would share many other important experiences with Christ. All the time, though, something real and important was, was happening inside of them. They were becoming more and more like their master. They were becoming more and more committed to him and more and more committed to one another. Their faith, which was not even as large as a mustard seed, began to grow and it was growing and growing and growing. They would stumble and they would lose hold of it from time to time, but they would always come back to it and it would blossom it would blossom into a mighty faith that would shake the Roman Empire. You know, I think back on my own faith journey and how my own transformation take, has taken place and is taking place and how it's still happening today. I think of the bumps in the road and the times that I've stumbled, but I also think of how I have slowly been transformed into the follower of Jesus that I am today. These men, these three, would move from being terrified to committing big. Their faith would grow from being easily intimidated to being almost invincible. They were in the process of being transformed by the presence of the transfigured Christ. And the same thing can happen to us and for us. Like the disciples, we can also be terrified in Christ's presence because we are imperfect. But we soon discover that in his presence, we are not without value. We are not without hope. Because Christ loves us, change is possible. This is the heart of today's lesson. The proper response to the transfigured Christ is transformation. To see the transfigured Christ is to be aware not only of our inadequacies, 
but also our possibilities. As he is, so we shall be one day. Christ calls each and every one of us to commit big and move from terrified to transformed. To see Christ as he really is, is to experience real personal transformation. Terrified to transformed. And finally, turned loose. Turned loose to transform the world. That's our calling. Move from terrified to transformed to turn loose to go out and transform the world. Christ came preaching the kingdom of God, the reign of God in every heart. And it is to his followers that he has given the commission for our teaching and the preaching of this kingdom. That's you and me, by the way. <laughs> we are to be transformed and then we are to be transformers. Now, you know how the story of the Mount of Transfiguration ends. Peter wants to, to build three shelters, one for Christ, one for Elijah, one for Moses, and just stay on the mountain and just soak it all up. But it is not Christ's mission to stay on the mountain and be worshipped. Jesus' ministry is a ministry of love to the people in the valley below. And that's our ministry too. That's our calling. We, when we have been transformed by the transfigured Christ, we catch a vision of what the world could be if we all lived under Christ's lordship. No longer would Peter, James, and John be content to live in a tiny fishbowl. Christ had called them to bigger and better things. Now it's time for them to reach their full potential as his followers. And friends, it is time for us too to escape the fishbowl. Suppose you and I had been there with Peter, James, and John on the mountaintop when Jesus was transfigured. What would have happened to us? Would we have been terrified? Would we have been transformed? Would we have been turned loose to transform the world for Jesus Christ? Friends, the transfigured Christ is here. He is with us. And he is saying to you and to me, do not be terrified, but be transformed. And go out and transform the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Hi again. Thanks for joining us in this online worship service here in April. It's a beautiful time of year. I hope you're able to get out and enjoy it some. Uh, once again, as we say every week, if there's anything that we can do for you, please let us know. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen.